refuge and my strength is my very present help in the time of trouble. Reading from the book of Mark, that is beginning of the 35th chapter, excuse me, the 35th verse, the 4th chapter of the book of Mark in the 35th verse. It said, in the same day that when evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over, that is, to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, uh, they took him evening as he uh, was in the ship. And there were also with them a lot of little other ships. And there arose a great storm, a wind, and the waves began to beat against the ship. So much so that the ship was full of water. And then uh, he was in the hinder part of the ship. Jesus was sleeping on a pillar. So they awake him and they said unto him, Master, carest not, carest not that we perished? And he arose and he, he, he uh, rebuked the winds Man. and he said unto the sea, Peace be still. The wind ceased and then there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of a man is this? For even the winds and the sea obey. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another Sunday, another day. Thank you, God, that you have opened the door for us to come in and worship and praise. And not only that, we can give thanks unto you for all of the many things that you have done. We ask of God that you would bless us in a special kind of love you, Lord, and we're here today only because of you. In the midst of all that goes on, we still can bow our heads to you and thank you. That is for all that you've done. Bless us again today and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We'll have our praise and worship at this time. Amen. Praise the Lord. know God is worthy to be praised this morning. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Feel free to clap your hands this morning. Sing along with me this morning. Give God the honor and praise that he deserves because he's worthy. Psalm says, Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You're Thank you. 
Requests that we have are many at this time, and I know if we could even have everybody to voice their prayer requests, I imagine it would take all day. Even if you had somebody to give a real testimony, that would take a lot of time. Amen. But today we want you for you to blow your horns if you have a request upon your heart. We need to pray for churches abroad. And uh, pray for the people of God as well as the pastors and all of that. Uh, pray for the bereaved families and the things that are going on that is in our lives right now. Amen. Amen. A lot of people have been reduced to having things private. Uh, we have private funerals. I've done a private wedding already. And the thing about it is, is that nothing is at the norm now because of the pandemic. And please don't forget what it's still doing. It's still killing people. People are still dying. So let's remember all of this in prayer. Amen. 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 God is so good. We're going to have a prayer song, and after that, we're going to ask Brother Glenn to come on and lead us to the throne of grace. Amen.
as we uh, think about going before the Lord this morning, we'll do something a little bit different. Give us all an opportunity. I'm going to lead out in prayer, but while you sit in your car and uh, there, are, there, were, there are many requests that were mentioned that I may not be able to call and recall, I'm going to ask that while you're in your car, there might be specific requests that you have of the Lord that you want him to move in somebody else's life or heal, do a healing in their, in their life or touch them in a special way. I want you to join along with me and that we will all lift up a, a voice of praise, a, a voice of, of honor to God, and we will share our requests with the Lord that he might begin to move in a miraculous way. Because I, I don't know what all the requests are. He knows them, and you know they, what they are. But we need to speak them out to him. And let's be agreed. Dear Father, we come before you, Father. We thank you and praise you, Lord, for a beautiful day that you've given us, Lord, that the sun is shining, Lord, and the weather is temperate, Father. But we can worship you outside, Father, that we can worship you, Father, in spirit and in truth, Father. Lord, you are a spirit, Lord. We can't touch you. Lord, we can't see you with our physical eyes, Father. But, Lord, you are a spirit, Lord, that touched our lives and flows through our bodies, Father. And we thank you for that, Lord. And as we come before you this morning, Father, we come right now with a grateful heart, Father. Because you have been faithful to us, Lord. No matter what we say, as of this day, you protected us from this virus, Father. You let it not come to us, Father, to call us and cause us harm. Lord, we thank you for that, Father. We praise you for your faithfulness, Lord. And Lord, as we come right now, Lord, we intercede, Father. Right now, Lord, there are many requests, Father. Truly, we are living in the last days, Father. Lord, we, are, we have requests of healing, Father. Lord, I can think of a sister right now that got a, 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 a diagnosis, Lord, that wasn't favorable, Father. But we know that you are the great physician, that there's nothing impossible for you, Father. Begin, let your miracle uh, uh, touch her, uh, flow in her mind, Father. Lord, let it flow through her, her body, Father. Lord, provide the healing right now, Father. Father. Lord, you know these bodies. You created them, Father. Lord, we pray right now, Father, that her body and all of the bodies, Lord, that we are lifting up will function to the perfection that you made it to function in, Father. Every cell, Father. Lord, every every every, every part of the Lord of their blood, Father, will flow properly, Father. That your healing virtues will flow within them, Father. Lord, we come praying right now, Lord, that you will continually move and, and be with us, Lord, as a people, Lord. In this time, Father, where there's seem to be so much unrest in this country, Father. There's so much hatred going around, Father. Lord, we need your love, Father. We need you to touch us, Father. We need you to bring us together, Father, to unite us, Father, to put us on one accord, Father. We pray right now, Father, that you would move in a miraculous way, that you would perform a miracle, Father, that you would give us hope, Father, that you would give us direction, Father. And Lord, we come right now thanking you, Father, for what you're going to do. We thank you for answering our prayers, Father. We magnify your name, Father, because you are worthy of all of our praise. And Lord, we will forever give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. We ask you to grant these things according to your son Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Bless thou the Lord, oh my soul. Bless thou the Lord, oh my soul. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. We thank you for your offerings and your givings. And uh, whatever way that you're doing it, we appreciate it. And we love you. That is for that. We believe that everything that God makes gives. And uh, we thank you. That is for giving. Amen. Amen. Uh, by way of announcements, uh, if you're not on, uh, on Wednesday nights, we have services on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. And this Wednesday night is um, Ladies' Night. Amen. Do we have any other announcements that we know of? Amen. Since there are none, amen. Uh, Sister Lori is going to come with the song, and then we'll have the message after that. Anybody miss Bethesda? Blow your horns if you miss Bethesda. Hallelujah. There's a choir song that's been on my heart. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Sing along with me, Bethesda. In your car, stand out your car as I see. Sister Grace, always outside your truck. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship. 
worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give Him the honor. Give Him the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give Him the praise. Worship Him. Worship Him. Hallelujah. Worship Him. not to let us to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And we're doing that. We're coming together this morning and we're worshiping you in the beauty of holiness and the splendor that is of holiness. We thank you, Lord, knowing that you're going to bless today. You allow us to be behind the podium one more time. You do the blessing, Lord. Bless the speaker in here. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God has been so good. Amen. 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 Now, early on during the pandemic and the corona, coronavirus, I had developed a taste for a hamburger. A hamburger. And I rolled by a Burger King and I saw a sign that says, two waffles for five dollars. Two waffles for five dollars. So I naturally proceeded. That is to purchase uh, two burgers at that low price. Wouldn't you? Amen. Amen. 
But I noticed that the car in front of me, it pulled off very quickly at the place whereby you order your bourbon. And I proceeded to, to uh, pull up in that place. And a lady came over the speaker and she said these words. She said there was a car that was before you that made a very, very large order of 100 burgers. We don't have the normal amount of people to work because of the pandemic, she said. And as she began to go through it on this note, she said this order, and she said these four words, is more than I expected. These words fell from her lips. She said this order was more than I Amen. Uh, when the pandemic swept our way, I talked to an, an RN from Sinai Grace, and as, as I began to talk to him and listen to him, he said over 100,000 cases and deaths was at that one hospital. I said, wow, that was overwhelming. It was more than medical science could imagine. It was more than the hospital could handle. It was more than the first responders, that is, could handle. It's more than your job could handle, more than the school that you're working at can handle. It was more than your church could handle. And at the end of the day, you really want to know the truth? It was more than they expected. Than they expected. Amen. Not only that, but uh, after the pandemic came, it ended with hatred like a mighty rushing wind. Would you agree with that? I saw a policeman actually execute a man by the name of George Floyd by putting his knee on his neck and keeping it on there for eight minutes or better, believe it or not. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And he did it right in front of the world, right in front of that city, that township, believe it or not. You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? It makes somebody want to stand up and say, this is more than I. Expect. Now you can toot your horn right now, but there's some things happening right now that's a little more. I don't know about you than I expected. Then there was a lady by the name of Breonna Taylor who was minding her own business, try, trying to rest after her daily labor. Amen. When the local police task force broke down the door and emptied about 32 rounds in an apartment. Now, if you shoot that many rounds, you bound to hit a mosquito. All right. I'm a marksman with a, with a handgun myself. If you empty that many rounds, you're going to hit somebody. You know, and uh, it wasn't drunk while driving. But guess what? She was killed while sleeping. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You understand? But somebody rose up and said, guess what somebody said? This is a little more than I expected. And what's going on in America today, you can say what you want. It's more than I expected. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And, and I heard and I learned why we and the whole world was in this uh, pandemic bu bubble that the chief of all arms, let's just call him that, don't say his name, said that I knew that the pandemic was in the air, you understand, mm -hmm. you see, and I knew all about it and I was told everything about it, but I downplayed it. Mm -hmm. I called it a hoax. Mm -hmm. Somebody better help me up in here. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And I can imagine mm. even somebody from the White House and the outhouse and your house and my house stood up and said, this is more than I expected. This has to be more than you all expected. It's a little more than I bargained for. It's a little more than I can explain. It's over my head, believe it or not. It's more than I can imagine. It's more than one mind and one heart. Amen. And more than one mind and one heart can handle at one time. It's a little more than I expected. Now all of these folk who claim they know what to do with pandemic and this and that and the other, I know this and that. I just listen to them and I say to myself, this is more than I Expected, believe it or not. Now, now, let's walk around the text just for a little while and I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go because, you know, I don't believe in having service long. Not all day. I don't. 
You understand? Now, 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 let me walk around the table. The Bible says that Jesus, amen, he had the, uh, just got through teaching. And not only that, he teaches the people and his disciples. He was teaching in parables. And then he sent the multitude away. And he decided to get in the ship and say, let's go on the other side with a lot of other little ships following him. him not. Now, verse 37 says that there arose a great storm, a great storm, a great storm that had winds and waves and it beat against the ship and it filled the ship with water. Amen. And, and at that place and point in Plateau, somebody must have said this storm is a little more than we expected. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Can I ask y'all a question? Have you ever had a storm in your life? A real one? You ever had something happen that happened that overwhelmed you? You ever had something that happened that filled your boat and that was really ready to shipwreck you? Amen. Have you ever had something to happen in your life? I'm talking about something real now. We ain't talking about dumb stuff. Something that turned your life almost around. A man told me something happened and left me in prison for 25 years. There are stones. Yes, yes. That can come in your life to the point to whereby you will back up and say, this is a little more. My God. Mm. This here is a little more than I expected. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Somebody got married and say, this is a little more. Oh, no, let me leave that alone. Than I All right. <laughs> How many of y'all know what I'm talking about up in here? You understand? Because cause the thing about it is you got to be real careful. So the first thing is, first thing is was a great storm. Great storm. Great storm. You understand? Not only a great storm, but, but, but these problems and these storms come to shipwreck us. It brought great distress. Distress. Look at the disciples out in the middle of the sea. They panicking. That's what they're doing. They're panicking. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? The storm that just rolled up in their life. You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? But they didn't know what to do. But David said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the heat. You need some help with the storm, girl. You, you need some help. Now, I don't know whether or not you can pull it up, jump it up. I don't know what you can do to get some help. Call on your telephone. I don't know what. But you're going to need some help if a storm roll up in your life. And the main thing about it is, guess what, sometimes, Brother Panola, I'm minding my own business. I didn't even call the storm. All right. And right. it rolled up in your life, and it will tax everybody in your house, in your church, on your job, and everywhere else. <clears throat> Who asked for the pandemic? My God. <clears throat> Nobody. Amen. Some folks are acting like everybody I asked for. I didn't ask for it myself. Amen. Not me. Ask for something nobody can do nothing with. Y'all better help me up in here. Somebody better help. So the first thing was a great storm. Great storm. Great storm. When a great storm comes, you better call on somebody. When the billows are rolling, am I right? When the sea is mad, y'all better call on somebody. Number two, it was a great calm. It was a great calm. It was a great calm that came over the plate. Great calm. You understand? The sea is mad. Waves are beating against your life. You understand? But hold on. Hold on. We got help on board. We got Jesus on board. Am I right? All right. Jesus is sleeping on the pillar. You understand, you understand. Uh, you need to wake him up. You need to wake him up right now. They woke him up and they said, Care's not, cares not that uh, we perish. You understand? You see, but as long as Jesus is on board, you got some help. How many of y'all know what I'm talking yeah. about? As long as you keep him. Yeah. That is in the center of your if you keep him on the mantelpiece of your life, you got some help. Am I right about that? You see, you got some help. You see, because he's the center of my joy. He, he he's what he's the lifter of my head. He's a bridge over over troubled water. He's the captain of my ship. You understand? They call him master. They call him master. But the thing we need to do when you having trouble, you need to wake him up. Wake him up. I don't need a sleeping Jesus in my life. I need Jesus to wake up. He needs to be mobile. He needs to speak to the, the storms right Amen. now. We need to wake him up. Amen. Somebody better help me up in here. Yes. You got to wake him up. Wake him up. You understand? And they did that. This is the great. And so he, they woke him up. They woke him up, believe it or not. You see, if Jesus is on board, we can cross over to the other side. Am I right? Jesus is sleeping. They woke him up. He spoke to the, the sea and told the sea to hush. Just shut up. Just told the sea to hush. You understand? All he said was peace. Be still. And that's what we need today. You need some peace. Amen. People need peace in their life. Right now, we need some peace in the White House. Yes, sir. You, you, you need some peace. 
you, you need, don't play with that now. You need some peace. He said, peace, be still. So he stilled the waters, you understand. The Bible said that the wind ceased, you understand. And there was a great calm came over everything, amen. You know, I wish God would just speak to everything. All of this chaos that's happening mm. in people's life, all of this self grandizement that mm. people bring to you all the time about them. Everything is about them. You know, the church is about everybody right now, except God. All right. My proof. It's always my proof. My proof. My family. You understand? My this, my that. You can go on name it, you understand? Mm. It's about everything except God. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to make it about the God, you understand? And I wish God would come in and he would step in. I wish he would speak to all of this bias and prejudice that we see every day of our life. I wish God would just speak to the waters or speak to the people of time and tell them, peace, be still. That's all you got to do. Peace, be still. Because they're making these these places, these cities are killing. Just it ain't nothing but a killing uh, a yard for these some of these people. Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? So when the great storm came, came, you understand? You understand? The great storm came. You see, there was there, there was a great storm. Then there was a great calm. And not only that, the last thing is there was a great discovery. Great discovery. You understand? You see, uh, uh, verse forty said this. It says this. It says this. It says, "Why are ye fearful?" How is it that you have no faith? Now, not a living faith. It says no faith. Lord, have mercy. How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, the Bible said, one to another. They say, and what manner of a man is this, that the wind obey him? Now, when Jesus returned to the earth, he needs to find some faith. Now, now, first of all, God develops our faith. How does he do it? He sends you a storm. Mm. Some of y'all y'all need a real storm in your life. You hadn't seen one none yet, one yet. If he's going to develop your faith, he's gonna send you a storm. He's gonna send you a storm. And when he do now, you gotta know how to hold on. You got to know how to hold on when God sends you a storm to do what? To develop your faith. He will send you a storm, amen, to do what? so that you can understand what faith is. And a lot of people don't know what faith is. They don't know what faith is. <clears throat> you think they know what faith is, but they don't know what faith is. Wait until the storm comes. You understand? When he comes to storm, he calms the winds and the waves and all of that, even the sea obey. Amen. You see? But they shouldn't have said what matter of a man is this because they've seen him operate already. Am I right about that? You see? They act like they didn't even know the miracle worker. You understand? One thing about him, he can work a miracle on land, a sea, or in the air. Jesus can do it. Am I, am I right about that? Jesus said, you can drink water, you can bathe in it, you can cook in it, but guess what I can do? I can walk on it. I don't know nobody else around here that can walk on water. Not me. I ain't seen nobody that can walk on water. What manner of a man is this? Amen. That's what they said. What manner of a man is this that died on Calvary? What manner of a man is this? They hung him on a tree. What manner of a man is this? He walked upon the water. What manner of a man is this? He come the raging sea. What manner of a man is this? He died for you and he died for me. God died for everybody. That's what manner of a man he is. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see? But can I ask you all y'all a question before I get out of here? You understand? Where is your faith? We need to be a little more faithful in front of God. You understand? All you need is faith is the size of a mustard seed. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We need a faith that's bigger than the obstacle that we're facing. We need a faith. Is there a child here? Come here. Is there a child here? Is there a child? Anybody got a child in the car? Anybody got a child in the car? You don't have a child in the car. Anybody got a little dog in the car? <laughs> you got a child in the car? Come on, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, it's going to take Jeremiah a while to get here, but he's a good man. And thank you for, for, the, for the parking lot of Jeremiah. Jeremiah worship and parking lot center. Come on, Jeremiah. You can, you can jog a little bit. I want to show you something about faith and how it is and how it works, believe it or not, you understand. I want to show you something. Can you get up from there for a minute? Just for one day, leave that where it is. Can you do it? Do that. Do that. I want to show you something. I want to show you how faith works. 
Yes. All right. Come on, come here, man. Stand right here. Come here, Brother Panola. Stand in front of him with your back to him. Stand in front of him. I want to ask you a question. Back up here. If he fall, you, you go forward. If he fall backwards, can he catch it? Can he catch Panola if he falls backwards? No. Huh? No. Blow your horn then. Blow your horn. No. no. It ain't possible, is it? it? Now, he's smaller than Brother Panola. Am I right? Thank y'all. Y'all can go sit down. But guess what? All you need is a saint that's smaller than Jeremiah, and you can catch Panola. Because all he said was, you need faith the size of a mustard seed. Am I right? If you have a faith that's the size, the size of a mustard seed, he said, you can do what? You can move mountains. Am I right about that? And you see, we play with this thing they call faith. And God is saying, when I return the second time, will you have faith? Am I right? And the thing we need to do is put Jesus on board of our ship. Am I right? And when he's on board, you need to wake him up. You need to wake him up because the time clock is ticking. You need to wake him up because there's sin in the camp. You need to wake him up because what? Guess what? My faith depends upon him. You need to wake him up because over 200,000 people has died from the pandemic. You need to wake him up because there's a president election coming. You need to wake him up. You need to wake him up because the charge that keep I have in the God the glory time. You need to wake him up because I want to survive through this pandemic. You need to wake him up, believe it or not, because he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. You need to wake him up, because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. You need to wake him up, because this is a little more than I expected. It's a little more than you expected. It's a little more than the world expected. You need to wake him up. Look at somebody and say, wake him up. Wake him up. Wake him up. If he's on board, wake him up. Wake him up. Wake him up. Wake him up. You need to wake him up and stop lying because this is a little more than some of y'all. Expect it. Because I can't stay at home and eat Oreos and watch Netflix and say everything is all right. All right. I can't do that. This whole thing, you need to say to yourself, it's a little more than we all expect it. And stop acting like you got a corner on. You don't have no corner on nothing. You don't have no corner on yourself. This stuff has messed up the world. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And the only promise that we have is this great titanic promise that says that I will be with her. He said, Lo, I will be with you always, even till the end, even until the end. You understand? And people done last days, us to death. This is the last days. I know what the earth is coming to. Just shut up and sit down and get some faith from somewhere. Just get you some faith. Just get you some faith and you'll be all right. Stop running your own little game. It ain't working. You know it ain't working. We need some faith. Because this thing is a little more. It's a little more than I expected. I don't know about nobody else. I never thought the things that happened to me would happen to me. You understand? It's a little more. It's too much. It's too much. And I have to pray that way. Every now and then I have to say, you know what? You know what? This is so sad. This is so sad, you understand, that a lot of this stuff is happening, believe it or not. You're building a house and send for parts to people say it'll be eight weeks before you get it. Some folks say that that company done closed down. The pandemic has done that. What is over four million people are getting unemployment, it ran out, you understand? And what happened to stimulus? We need stimulus. We need everything we can right now. Do you know how many people are out of work and that's not going back to work? It's more than you can expect. 
And there's no sense in you running around saying it's not. You understand? And we know that God is faithful. You understand? And that he will bless us. I believe he is. But sometimes you're a little overwhelmed. I know I am. And I don't play with it. And I don't act like it's not. But it really, really is. You know what I mean? God has been so good. And what we need to do is we need to pray. We need to pray. We really need to pray. And not only that, but you're hearing this from me, and I usually don't say this, but you need to get out and vote this time. You need to get out and vote. You need to get out and vote. Because the thing about it is we need all the help that we can get. Amen. If, you, if you're in your car right now, and if this has been a little more than you expected, step out come on, pray with me. I'm praying because this stuff has been a little bit more, a little, little, little more than I expected. I, I didn't expect what to happen to happen. You understand? It's a little more. Anybody want to pray? Anybody want to come and say, you know what, it's overwhelming? It's real. It's really overwhelming. It's something that I've never seen before in my life. It's something that it looks as if it's almost like the lady that had the old up hamburger. She said, you know what? This is a little more than I expected. And that's the way I feel and that's the way I am right now. Amen. Amen. Come on up and pray. You can't even take a good trip. If you take a trip, you got to be quarantined. When you get there, you have to be orientated, orientated, touched by this doctor and that doctor. It's a mess. It's a mess, y'all. It's a little more than I expected. I don't know about you, but it's a little more than I expected. Anybody else want to pray? Come on, son. Come on, son. Storm or a block, 
then we think about you. But we need to think about you at all times. We need to think about you in the time of a storm because you're the one that's going to end it. You're the one that's bringing it. You're the one that is going to make us strong. Then we can encourage others to, to trust in you. We ask you, Father, just like the young lady that, that was shot in her apartment. Lord, we live in a world that's too much, more than we expect. We thought we could live in this world with you in peace. But, Father, even with you, the world is still going crazy. It's a shame you cannot be in your apartment, your home, without being shot at, not by a murderer, not by a criminal, but by law enforcement. So we thank you, Father, and we pray, Father, that you will be with us. Even those, Lord, that act like they don't have common sense. Yeah. That they, they have the right to shoot at anybody that they want to. We ask you, Lord, speak to their hearts. That their hearts may be changed. That their thinking will be changed. We ask you to be with every person that's standing up here right now. And when you leave this place, Remember, when a storm comes your way, we serve a storm break. We serve a God that knows your situation, your problem. He knows how long to keep you in the storm. He knows when you're ready to come out of the storm. So, we, Lord, we just thank you and praise you. And ask you to give us the strength. Give us the faith. Give us, Lord, what we need, that we will be strong. We ask you to bless all those families that have lost loved ones. Be with them at this time, Father, that they may continue to know they're being prayed for. They're being prayed for, Lord, because of love. They're being prayed for, Lord, because of you. We just thank you for this opportunity that we have this church right now that we can stay together, even in the midst of this pandemic. We can stay together as a church family and encourage each other, no matter what the situation. Just look at it like this. If a problem is coming my way, and more than I expected, call on your God and trust him. Trust him. And don't do anything else but trust him and listen at what he's saying to you. Ask him to speak to your heart that you will be still and be quiet and let him speak to your heart that you know what he's saying to you. As the song goes, Lord, speak to my heart so I know what to do. That's what we need to do. We need to ask him to speak to our heart so we we'll know what to do and we won't panic in the midst of this pandemic. We just thank you, Father, for bringing us together. Even when this pandemic is coming, we're wearing masks, we're sanitizing, but Lord, we still worship you. And we thank you. We thank you for your salvation. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your saving grace, your loving grace. We thank you for your delivering grace. We thank you for your promises your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for your power. We thank you for correction in our life. But, Lord, we thank you that we know we serve a God that's able. If you can part the Red Sea, if you can bring your people out of Egypt, Lord, we know there's nothing that you can't do. So we just thank you, Father, for being the great God you are. We ask you to bless each and every person here. Bless their families. Bless their households. Bless their finances. Bless their health. And Lord, those in the hospitals and in the nursing homes. Some they, the family members can't even visit them. They can see them from through a window, but they can't listen. So Lord, we just ask you to bless them. And if it's in your will that they recover and come home, Lord, we're praying that it is in your will. And we're asking you to have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we move, let's pray for all the caretakers that are taking care of people in their homes and other people. Father, we thank you for the caretakers. We ask that you bless them, strengthen them, Lord. Everybody can't be sick, God. So we thank you for the 
ones that are still can use their limbs. Some people who can take temperatures and feed and watch people. We thank you for that, Lord. We just ask that you would continue to bless and strengthen those in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Somebody overthrow your heart and thank you. I don't know about you, but this stuff is a little more than I can handle sometimes. You know, I'm a human being. It's a little more than I, I can handle. I find myself in tears because of all that is happening and all that is going on. Amen. Amen. We want to thank Brother Mike's glory. Amen. This is Benita. Also, I appreciate you. And we love you. He has to have surgery, my friend here. And they got to put it, they got to put him to sleep tomorrow. The dentist has to do that. And we want him to wake up. Am I right? So we're gonna pray that God will bless a man in a special way. Father, we believe and we love you, and we believe in divine healing. We believe in medical science and all of those wonderful great things and great people, first responders, and all of that. But we believe that you can move all of that out of, out of the way work a miracle. So we ask that you would touch this young man, be with him. It is a serious matter when you go under anesthesia and they put you to sleep. So let's pray for him that God would just continue to bless him. Amen. We want to see him jumping around, tearing up everything like he usually. We love it and Lord, we love you. We ask that you would bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. Say amen. amen. Alright. Alright, everybody. Okay. Father, we thank you, Lord. Bless us as we go in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.